I'm Boots Herrera, former director of the CCP Visual Arts and Museum Division and currently director of the Ateneo Art Gallery. In this month's episode of Cultural Cash Online, I will talk about the curtain of the CCP Little Theatre, designed by Roberto Chabet. On the control panel, the curtain of the CCP Little Theatre is simply labeled Chabet. I wonder if the technical crew who would man the curtain during performances knows the origin of that name. Roberto Chabet was the first director of the CCP Museum Department. He was part of the original team of artists who were invited to carry out the vision of a national cultural center. The center then had a lean team. Its artistic group, headed by Dean Lucrecia Casilag as artistic director, only had three units the Performing Arts Department, the Museum Department, and the CCP Library. Chabet was appointed as Museum Director in 1967 and received the Rockefeller Grant to New York in 1968 to visit museums in preparation for his post at the CCP. For the Center's inauguration in September 1969, Chabet, with the assistance of Raimundo Albano, launched the museum's program focusing on modern and contemporary art. By 1970, however, he decided to leave his post to begin a teaching career, first in UST and then in UP Diliman. The idea to transpose an artwork into a tapestry, of course, follows the concept of the main theater curtain, which is based on an oil painting by Hernando R. Ocampo. We cannot confirm the design for the curtain of the little theater stage was actually produced. It may have been while Chabet was still with CCP, but the curtain was completed the following year in 1971. The Little Theatre was officially inaugurated in August 1971 with the Festival of Three Plays. First, Virginia Moreno's play, The Onyx Bull, then Bertolt Brecht's Mother Courage, and third, the Commedia, Principe Baldovino. Chabet himself revealed that Federico Alquas was the artist who was originally invited to create a design for the LT curtain. This was around the time the Barcelona-based artist was already exploring tapestry works which were fabricated in what was then Czechoslovakia. You have to remember the little theater was not ready during the center's inauguration in 1969, but the other commissioned works in the lobby area of the little theater were already completed. These are works by Arturo Luz, Cesar Legaspi, and Eduardo Castrillo. Even with this later inaugural schedule for the Little Theater, Alquas was not able to produce the design on time. Eventually, Leandro Luxin, the center's architect, requested Chabet if he could create a design for the curtain that was to be translated into a tapestry by a weaving company in Kyoto, Japan. Chabet confirmed that the design was based on a, and I quote, black and white collage turned into a two-toned color, tan and a tan with gold threads." Unquote. This was the exact description he sent me in a text message during one of those exchanges we had about the CCP collection and programs. I appreciated how he would send those snippets of information, his recollections, that eventually helped reconstruct the story of the CCP collection. Going through the Chabet archives, I came across one poster design he did for the International Music Festival, which CCP hosted in 1969 as part of its inaugural program. The design concept and elements have a close affinity to that of the curtain. The background is close to that tan color, and the irregular forms appear to be silhouettes of collaged paper. I am not sure how involved Chabet was in the process of transposing his design, into an enlarged scale that is the tapestry. Although I remember him saying that he simply submitted the design and specs. We don't really have a way of confirming that now, but with much certainty, we can say that he did not produce any other similar works on textile or fabric. In that sense, the LT curtain is a singular work. Perhaps it is more significant to focus instead on how his design concept relates to his practice. Collage making has been a part of Chabet's practice even in the early 1960s. When he was planning for his first solo exhibition at the Luce Gallery in 1961, he wanted to include some collage works. However, Arturo Luce recommended that the neophyte's first exhibition should focus solely on his paintings. Later in 1976, Chabet held another solo show at the Luce Gallery, and this time featuring collages alongside his paintings. 
Collage making was certainly an important part of his body of works, and in his more than 50 years of art practice, Chabet produced several series in this genre, the China Collages, the Head Series, the King Kong Series, among others. In her essay titled, Seeing Unseeing, the Works of Roberto Chabet, Ringo Bunoan notes, and I quote, Chabet's proclivity for paradoxes is made no less obvious by his penchant for collage. While collage is often linked to chance and open-ended associations, Chabet creates his own system and applies his own logic to an otherwise irrational activity. The early 70s also coincided with the time when Chabet, together with fellow artists in Shop 6, an artist-run space, held exhibitions and events or happenings that were essentially anti-museum. They used unconventional materials that were generally perishable or created works that were ephemeral or not meant to be preserved. Rico's opening line in the same essay resonates well with the LT Theater curtain. She notes, and I quote, Roberto Chabet's patently unmonumental works are responses to the modernism that was in place in the Philippines in the 1960s when he first entered the art scene, and I quote. I believe that transposing a small, unmonumental work on paper into a large-scale work for everyone to see before every performance in the cultural center of the Philippines was exactly Chabet's point. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Cultural Cash Online. 